Hi and welcome back. Now, if you have been living under a rock for the last three weeks and unaware, the multiple grenade launcher is coming to rust. Now, I want to see exactly what it would be like for raiding and taking out things like turrets and players, which I'll show you at the end. Now, to get this, you have to basically get it from a drop, or I've been told the heavy scientists. Ammunition is exactly the same, apart from at the moment on staging, you can get the shotgun rounds via the bandits. Now, it's actually quite surprising how useful this is. Now, you'll probably see about 100,000 solo raid videos coming up very shortly, but I want to give you the best example of what to expect if you risk it all and try and get one of these launchers. And as I said, it is quite surprising how much damage they actually do to some of the structures. So let's quickly jump in and I'll show you exactly each type now to start off with, I will show you the 40mm shotgun round just to give you an example of what to expect. Now as you can expect, Twig doesn't really stand up very well to the 40mm shotgun shell. From testing I found that if you're going to buy this from Bandit Camp, I wouldn't use it for raiding through wood walls and wood doors. It takes too long. Cost effectiveness, I'd probably say that just sticking with your yokas, very cheap and easy to use. If you lose it, you're not really going to worry. That's going to make a lot of noise. If you are doing a solo, which you'll probably see all the videos of people doing a solo on the dead servers, and blowing through doors with these. But cost efficiency to the normal player, probably not the best. If I'm being honest, you can see it's not doing a hell of a lot. Unsure what the final scrap price will be. I'm sure someone can comment below and tell me after the wipe. However, for me, Raiding, probably not going to use it. Now, moving on to the high explosive, using onto the twig. As you can expect, twig being the weakest of all, but a lot of people use it to tower up to try and take compounds, etc. Take one of these, and that tower is no more. You can see, very, very strong. Now, moving on to wood, I'm going to show the splash damage because the splash damage is actually quite big, considering. Now, wood. We know a lot of people start with, especially if you solo, you just get your wood, get everything done, get a door on, and that's you. Someone rocks up with one of these, the splash damage you can see all over. It only takes two to smash for a wooden door. So if you are joining a server late, bear that in mind because your little base probably won't last very long if one of the clan members have got one of these. Now just to show hard and soft side is exactly the same. I'll plow another straight six because the final wall didn't actually get hit. Take it out, done. So, these are rare, don't get me wrong. However, if someone does get them quite early in the wipe, you're just going to have to make sure that you're prepared to potentially watch a little wooden shed get melted, basically. Now, moving on to stone itself. Again, I will show the actual splash damage for this quite big. It's scary how much it does. Now I'm not sure how many rounds you're going to get in a drop. However, if you get quite a lot, I can see it's been used a lot for stone walls as well. And the range is quite good. So expect to see it a lot from the big 10 year old clans. So moving on to sheet doors now. I'm going to do it so it just splashes, just not aim down the sights, then I'll shot again actually aiming down the sights because a lot of people are saying it takes 6, but it doesn't actually, it takes, well, 7, but I would probably use 6 in a bean can. Be more cost effective and save you on using those rounds. As you can see, gone, splash damage again, aiming down the sights, I'll take the 6 again and show that it leaves 8 HP, so again you're going to have to use a bean can. Or if you're super dedicated and tight, just sit there and pick it out. Now, armor doors aren't safe either. These pretty much melt through them. I say that not knowing how many of these rounds you're going to get at a time. But it could be an easier way of getting through doors, especially if you get quite a high amount. Now, this talk that these may come into Bandit Camp is something you can buy. Personally, I don't think they will because... As you can see, they can be quite devastating. If you're getting these from drops, they're effectively free if you manage to get the drop and get away, or if you take oil rig and you're in a group. So it's, it's free raid materials, really. 
Now, moving on to players, as you'd expect, these aren't geared, I know. However, for crowd control, if you're fighting, say, another clan or a group, you pop one of these and they're pretty much non-existent. Moving on to our little aim bottles, I was quite surprised that they only take two to actually get rid of these. I thought it'd probably about ten, given how much a pain in the arse they are. Moving on to turrets, a lot of people complaining about turrets and hoping that this would actually sort that. Shotgun just take six, so not really a massive help. Same with flame turrets, it will take six as well. Just bear in mind if you are taking them and standing close, they do blow up, so it can slow you down and take you out. Uh, moving on to our favourite little Tommy turret aim butter. It will take 12 to actually get through these. Now, all in all, I can see this being viable to use if you get enough ammunition for it. Now, as I said before, if you're doing an oil, rig, oil rig run, etc., these are effectively free because you're getting it via that. Keep an eye on the updates because things may change. However, as it stands, about six hours before the wipe, Potentially, this is what it is going to do, so it won't change too much. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next one.